So I am just headed in to get my Mavic Mini. I'm so excited to get it. It sat in customs for two days for some reason. And, uh, and so I was looking forward to doing a Mavic Mini video today, but it's super foggy out right now. And so I'm not gonna be able to fly. So instead of doing my first Mavic Mini video today, like I had planned, I wanna visit with you about something that's in drone news that came out recently, just a couple of days ago. DJI released an app. They didn't release it. They unveiled an app that they're planning to release later this year or next year. And what the app is called, it's a drone to phone app. And that's not the official name. I don't think they have an official name for it yet. But the purpose of this app is to allow anyone anywhere to just download the app to their smartphone. And then if they see a drone or they hear a drone within their immediate vicinity, within one kilometer, they can pull up that app and they can see the drone on their map and then they can click on it and then they can get all the information about that particular drone. They can see the altitude, the speed, the direction. And then also I think the purpose of this eventually will be, there'll be some information about that particular flight. So a pilot, hopefully somehow, maybe through the DJI Go 4 or DJI Fly or whatever app that they're using, will be able to enter the information about what they're doing with that flight, you know, hobby flight or inspection of a roof or crop inspection or something like that. And so um, the purpose of this app, according to DJI, is to provide a low cost solution that protects the privacy of drone pilots and gives comfort to bystanders and people on the ground that aren't sure what the drone is doing. And it, it provides transparency for people that are unsure of what's that drone doing? Are they spying on me? Or, you know, are they, do they have malintent of some kind? Uh, and so that's the purpose of this app. I reached out to Brendan Shulman, who is the vice president of legal affairs with DJI. And he graciously sent me a little statement here. I'm just going to read part of it. He says, we have consistently argued that the privacy of drone pilots must be respected and that the costs of this solution should be minimal. Other companies are proposing a mandate to connect all drones to a network remote ID system that could involve monthly account fees and compile a national database of all drone flights. Not a good thing. That's what we don't want. We do not want a national database of drone pilots. Uh, and then he says, we prefer this local broadcast approach. And so basically what, what he's saying is this is kind of the lesser of two evils. It puts the power in the people rather than in a centralized, um, you know, government solution for remote ID. Now, remote ID is supposedly the um, FAA proposal for remote ID is going to come out later this year, which is only six months away. And then it'll be a comment period, maybe a few months of comment from you and I. And then they're going to come up with a final remote ID law later in 2020. And then that's when DJI supposedly is going to release this app. And so, and then he also says he encourages anyone that has concerns once the FAA releases their proposal for remote ID to voice your concerns on the during the comment period um, on for the with the FAA. And and so upfront I think this is I think this is a good thing. When I first heard about it I'm like, "Oh my god, that's such an invasion of pilot privacy. <laughs> They're trying to protect private pilot privacy." But actually on the front end it looks like it looks like they're really trying hard to make an affordable solution using existing technology so you and I don't have to spend extra money on equipment, we don't have to pay a monthly fee, and we don't have to have a national central database. That is the word, I think that'd be the worst thing. So in my opinion, this is the lesser of two evils. Now, the bad thing about this app is not only can anyone who has the app on their smartphone see where the drone is, see where it's traveling, see all the information about it, they can also see and pinpoint the location of the pilot. Now for law enforcement agencies, for the FAA, for emergency um, personnel, that's a good thing. I think it's good to know where someone is so you can hold them responsible for any malice that they're going to incur. And you can go there, you can mitigate any issues that may arise. Great. But for the everyday person to see where I am at any time and come and confront me, that is a huge, huge invasion of my privacy. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure there's laws out there against that. And I'm pretty sure it's a law in Europe as well. I think they just recently passed, I can't remember what it's called. Let me know in the comments if you do know, but it's illegal for one person to track the movements of another person electronically. It's pretty clear. And so this app would break those laws. And so I think there's some work to do. 
Um, like I said, for law enforcement, great. For the FAA, fine. I'm okay with that. If you're not doing anything wrong, then that's fine. But, and if you're doing something wrong, then they can find you and they can correct you. <laughs> but for anyone to come here and say, what are you doing with that drone? I feel like you're spying on me. And you can say, no, I'm doing a roof inspection. You can see right there on the app. And they're like, I don't believe you. The drone was pointed in my direction. You're filming me and I don't, I'm not comfortable with that. And it's going to lead to some harassment and confrontations that are going to lead to bad things. Yeah, it's not going to happen all the time, but I guarantee you it will happen. And then the other thing that maybe hasn't been considered is if someone sees me flying my drone, they find me on the app, they know where I'm at. Most of the time, they're not going to want to confront me. Most people don't like confrontation. They're going to be like, what's he doing? I think he's spying on me. Guess who they're going to call? They're going to call local law enforcement. They're going to call their sheriff. They're going to call the police. They're going to say, someone's flying their drone. I feel like they're spying on me. Can you please go and confront them, investigate them? So here's the issue. Every one of those will need to be investigated. Imagine the resources that this is going to take from local law enforcement and also the knowledge that's going to be required for law enforcement having to do with drone law. They have a lot to learn, honestly. And, and so that's going to, that's a whole nother tangent. That's a whole nother issue on educating law enforcement on drone law and, you know, how to engage people that are, you know, pilots, professional pilots, or even hobbyists. And so that's an issue I think that they need to really, really address. And so I think if there's a way that they could give access to pilot location for, you know, officials and then restrict pilot location for individuals, that's the way to go because you're taking away the privacy issue. So yes, DJI, I applaud you for coming up with a better solution than, than a central, you know, database of drone pilots. I applaud you for saving us money by not having to buy extra equipment, um, not having to subscribe to a monthly fee of some kind, but allowing anyone to see where I am at any time, that's something that needs to be corrected. Now, I don't know if you agree with me or not. If you do, or if you don't, let me know in the comments. Let's have a discussion about this. I really hate to give my opinion on stuff like this, but I think it's important to share my thoughts just because of my experiences and I think over three years of flying drones now I have some knowledge that I think maybe is pertinent I hope it is and I hope you guys understand where I'm coming from I'm trying to look at both sides of this issue and it's gonna be a it's, it's a polarizing issue it definitely is going to be remote ID has been a polarizing issue you know since it came up a long time ago and so really what it comes down to is you and I voicing our opinion during the comment period, letting the FAA and letting the officials know how we feel you know, and having a dialogue that's, that's interactive, you know, not, not a knee jerk reaction. When I first saw this come out, when I first read a couple of articles on this, I had a knee jerk reaction. I'm like, that is the worst idea I've ever heard of. But once I started thinking more about it and once I started reading more about it, you know, visiting with Brendan from DJI, they definitely have the right idea. And so I think in the end, I think this is going to work out. I really do. But it's going to take you and me communicating our thoughts. And so um, I'll keep you guys updated as the remote ID comes out later this year, as the proposal comes out. I'll keep you updated on how to comment and how to share your opinion. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, hopefully you are, but if you're not, go ahead and click on that subscribe button. Also click on the thumbs up. That really will help this video get out to more people. If you click on the thumbs up, YouTube is going to like it. They're going to send it to more people. And that's what we need. We need people to be informed. That's the purpose of me making this video today. Sorry, I don't have my Mavic mini videos ready to go. I know a lot of you watching this are looking forward to that. So hopefully tomorrow I'm going to get it up in the air and uh, start doing some tutorials and some reviews of this amazing little drone. So thank you for watching the video today, everyone. Have a great day. As always, fly safe and fly smart.